Well, we're glad that you're here with us on this Monday to kick off a brand new week of a brand new month here, too. All right, let's go straight to the corn market, see where we're trading at this morning. We got off to a little bit of a weaker start last night on the overnight trade. Yeah, we're down two and a half cents now, most all the way across the board here in the corn market. Soybeans, on the other hand, four to five pennies higher in the Chicago wheat market, two to two and three quarter cents, even one contract out there at September, three and a quarter cents lower. Kansas City, it's lower, but not by quite as much. One to two pennies lower. Chris Swift is here with us. Swift Trading, good morning, sir. Good How morning, are you? John. I'm doing great. How are you this morning? You? I'm good. I'm good. good. So we've got a report that's going to be out Friday. Friday. What's the anticipation going into this as we talk about these It'd be a little interesting to see what we get. I, I think that uh, from what I heard this morning, they're going to try to raise the uh, yields on corn just a little bit, uh, maybe one, a little over 168. Uh, beans probably kept right about in the same there, but we're interest, interested to see what harvest does this week. We can see how much more of the harvest that we can get done uh, before that next rainstorm comes in. Today's genetics just have made things so much different. That, it, it's uh, amazing. You know, 20 years ago, this would have been a total disaster. But it this, would have been. Um, it, it seems like genetics or whatever the case is. Uh, certainly, is, we're able to put on some bushels. What about acres, though? We still don't know really how many acres we're, we're going to be able to have harvested by the end of this, are we? No, and we don't. And we saw last week we were at 51% harvested on the corn. And we know corn can hold a little bit better out in the fields than soybeans can. So I, I think that there was probably some changing of headers out of the corn header and put a soybean header on <laughs> and, and go out there and cut the beans while the weather was still permitting right now. Yeah, but this corn demand, mm -hmm. that still seems to be a real sticking point. And you would think think once we bring this corn down to these levels that suddenly we'd be more competitive on the global market unless we just have that much corn sitting around on a global scale. Well, and they do say we have quite a bit. And now that uh, China has gotten into the ethanol business, maybe that will help a lot. But still, their pork production is down so much, and their feed needs are down dramatically. And uh, across the world, we just have gluts and a lot of global grains around. Same thing with wheat then, too? Same thing with wheat. Demand would do a lot of good to be able to push that out of the bins. So is the trade leaning on just a trade agreement for demand, or do you think that uh, maybe adjusting the dollar, uh, maybe, a, 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 maybe a short crop somewhere else in the world would would bring this thing back um, I think the tariffs have a large part to do with it, and we know that the free trade is a great thing. Um, I believe that if uh, we could get the USMCA accord finished, that would at least give us a great boost until we could get further relations with China ironed out, and because of Canada and Mexico being our neighbors, I think we should be able to get that ironed out pretty quick and at least get some kind of trade with them back online again, and then we see how China wants to uh, evolve from here. What about the dollar? You know, the dollar sometimes can play a pretty significant role in how competitive we are in the, in the global market. It, it can, and our dollar is tied uh, approximately 40% to the euro currency. The euro currency, they have been weakening, weakening it every single chance that they can get. And so that just harms our dollar. It just increases the value of our dollar when you look at it from a perspective of the dollar index that we all view. It, it has come down just a little bit, but uh, last week it just kind of stopped going down and just sitting here right now. Do you think we'll be paying much attention to the harvest numbers that we see this afternoon? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll be very anxious to see how the crop progress is coming along. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Stay with us. We're going to sure. be back in just a moment here. More coming up right after this on the Market Day Report. All right, let's uh, get back to work here with Chris Swift, and uh, let's talk about this cattle okay, market. Sure. And over in the live cattle market, we saw Quite a big run up there on Friday. We did. Um, 112, maybe a few 113 cash, as high as 180 in the north. Mm -hmm. Pretty good uh, pretty good movement, it too. Is. Um, that's a pretty good price for this time of year. It is, and we saw October go off the board at 111, 68, 69, something like that on Thursday. So cash and futures converged again right in line. And um, it's been a really good cattle market here for the last several weeks. Uh, the fire has created a lot of turmoil in pricing. It left a lot of decision making to be pushed down the road. And now that we're into the year, those decisions are going to have to come back and be made again. And so I think that's why we're seeing a little bit of movement here. I want to go to the live cattle market sure. here for just moment look okay. at some of these numbers uh, we've got the December now up 32 February up 25 the only one that's down is April it's down three you mentioned that convergence uh -huh. look at December 11985 look at February 12450 uh -huh. we converge there yes wow and Feb and April probably the closest to there uh, less than a dollar apart now and, and they've been four and five apart for weeks yeah. so 
That could be a quite an interesting cattle could. market all yeah, of a sudden. Especially if you ever go inverted on them. So. <laughs> oh, man. So do you know that this is going to ramp up production at some point, right? We would think so, but but probably not any time real soon. Not not in the wintertime. In the springtime, they might make some decisions on holding back heifers. Um, but I don't think that too many of those decisions are being made right now. This is still a fairly short period of time, and I know we all have short memories of what, what transpired earlier this year, but uh, we went through a lot of price volatility this this year, and I think it's oh, going to take a whole other maybe four or five months to kind of settle that price volatility down some. I want to look at the feeder cattle sure. market also here. Uh, feeder cattle, and this market also got off to a weaker start mm -hmm. this morning. Those front three contracts still lower by anywhere from 18 to 22 cents. Uh, now we're starting to rebound a little bit on the deferred. You mentioned a salmonella case this morning. Yeah, it did. Um, it's eight states, if I'm not bad, I'm a peep, uh, bad and mistaken, one person killed and uh, eight others sickened to it. But uh, most of that, I think, is due to lack of uh, proper cooking to it. Um, but, yeah, it was, uh, it was on the uh, World News last night. Interesting. So you think that's what got us off to a week? It probably did, but again, because it's an issue that can be uh, very easily rectified by proper cooking, then I don't think it had a big impact. Okay. What about the pork market? We keep putting weights on these hogs, <laughs> you know, and, and now it's a day-by-day, -day, headline by headline trade. Yeah, and the, the index has continued to decline again. It, it rallied about uh, $15, $16. Now it's starting back down again, carrying huge premiums in the future because everybody knows what the aspect could be if we do get a deal with China. Over in hog futures this morning, let's take a look at those numbers here. Uh, hogs are off to a little bit of an inverted start here, too, from the front to the deferreds. December up 35, February up 15. If you go out to May and June, we're a little bit weaker still, but those, we were pushing well above 90 for a while. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Those summer months in the June, July uh, above 90, and that's some awfully wide bases to have to converge with. All right. Well, Chris, thank you very much. Absolutely. Always John, good to have you here on the program. Pleasure, sir. Thank sure, you very much. It. Talk to you soon. Chris Swift, Swift Trading in Nashville. Good insight. Thank you, guys.